Hello, everyone. Welcome to 2023 and January's Qubit Tech Talk. I have with me this month uh, Al Lanio, uh, from founder and CEO of Digital Red. Um, we've talked to him before about uh, e-cycling and electronic recycling and all that good stuff. But today, we're going to talk a little bit more about blockchain, crypto, and some of the uh, underlying technology that benefits more than just what we know from Bitcoin and Ethereum. How are you doing today, Al? I'm doing well. Thanks, Josh. Uh, how, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, I'm very interested in learning more about this because you know I've barely scratched the surface. I've I've done a little crypto mining on my home rig and turned it off because it was using too much power. <laughs> like, but like, really, I honestly didn't get into it a whole lot. I have a from a tech techie guy. I have a fairly okay understanding of blockchain, but I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that just don't even understand what what it means, what it can do for us in society. Yeah, it's it's um, you know, I've I've been involved uh, on the crypto front since twenty sorry, I'm just time uh, since twenty seventeen, um, and as you know, as you you understand it more and more, you, you really want to think beyond buying and trading trading on an exchange. You know, um, we've seen the prices go up and down, so. So when I started this company, I always in the back of my mind is like, how, how can I find a way to, to leverage recycling and crypto and go beyond buying and selling tokens? So um, if right. you could see my if you could see my screen, so you, I, can. you know I, I say digital freedom of speech, and I'll, I'll kind of explain what that that means in some of these slides. But kind of one of the things that just stuck stuck out on me was is when we started this process was we're really enabling infrastructure for people all over the world to use. And we're from a financial uh, standpoint, and whether we're make we're profitable on it, really we're not profitable. But the flip side is you've got this infrastructure you're help propping up that really, like I said, it's is giving people access all over the world at a very cheap rate. Um, so kind of what I was saying, how do how do I how do we bring together recycling and crypto? Um, you know, what what kind of things can we focus on? If we just focused on the blockchain technology piece. What projects can we be a part of? Every every token, every crypto that, that that's out there, they lost a lot of them. There's a project behind there, um, and, and there's no node operators. So in essence, there's you know you might have a server or a computer. You can be one of a hundred node operators all over the world. You can be one of a thousand node operators all over the world. So what projects make the most sense for the equipment that you have? Where is the break even? Um, so that way you're just not sure. losing a thousand dollars a month. Um, because the crypto is only worth a dollar, um, and, and so you're only getting paid a couple dollars, but the, the electricity side of it's costing you three or four hundred dollars. So you you want to be sometimes some kind of economically fiscally responsible here um, when you talk right. about mining. So um, again, I'm just kind of just going beyond this, and you know I don't want to get into like all the exchanges because crypto can make your head spin sometimes of all all the sure. different exchanges. Um, I, I think a lot of the negativity you're seeing in the last few months is just just some of the ex exchanges aren't decentralized and what happens is, is there's poor management or whatever happens and they get hacked and people lose a lot of their stuff so um, and that's, i'm always that's kind of the key of what you do is is, is the idea is a decentralized infrastructure so no yeah. one person or one company has control over the infrastructure of servers so to speak yeah, and, and you know what? What I do with with the the the, uh, the tokens that have the most value, the Bitcoin, the Ethereum. What, what I've done is just remove them off of exchanges, um, and just put them on a on a zip drive, a ledger. Um, I stick those on there, and I stick them in my safe. And then if exchange does go bankrupt or gets hacked, I've got the most valuable stuff that's sitting um, can't get can't get hacked. So okay. I keep some I keep some stuff on the exchanges if we're you know, some of the some of the tokens that aren't worth as much value wise, you know, we can kind of buy and sell and um, make some profits here and there. So, but for the big dogs, I always take those off offline. And I, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people don't even realize that you can do that, that you can. Hey, once you own the token, you can actually pull it off of an exchange that you're using and put it in, like you said, a zip drive, maybe a couple zip drives just to, yep. for backup and keep that keep it in your safe legitimate safe so that yeah, way got, yeah go ahead go ahead I no i was saying you, you just get to keep it without it's like if you had gold bars <laughs> yeah 
Exactly. It's a digital gold in some ways. And I've got three ledgers. And, you know, the ledgers, when they first came out, and when I say ledgers, they look like little zip drives. Um, and they've got a whole layer of security with them. But, you know, the first couple iterations that came out, they didn't have as much storage. So you soon realize as you buy more and add more different type of tokens to it, you run out of storage. So you have to buy buy the latest new and improved one where you can have a hundred different tokens on there. And um, so, yes, yeah, so I've got multiple different tokens, try to keep Bitcoin Ethereum on their own. Maybe some other ones that I, I think have long-term value. I'll put those on a different wallet. And then, you know, it's, it's a, to me, it's a long-term investment. If, if you believe in the technology and believe where, where everything's going, eventually that stuff is hopefully will, will be very rewarding. Um, so at this point, I'm not, I just leave it in the leave it in the safe, and I I kind of forget about it in some ways. Awesome, that's very um, cool. Yeah, so I'll I'll just really really quick, you know what what makes blockchain technology so special? I think it's the decentralized um, piece of this, where no one no one organization can control the blockchain. Um, these DAOs, these decentralized autonomous organizations, which we were a part of at least one of them. Um, we're all, it's kind of almost like a democracy. We're one of, you know, 100, 200 uh, members. And so the decision is not just one by one person. Um, it's a decision, a collaborative decision. Um, and it dictates where the direction of the, the technology, the application is going. Um, and then how to, how to translate into becoming a node operator, better hash. So we've, there's a software out there. So taking a step back, here's, if you, if, from a technical standpoint, you know, in a recycling we come across a lot of interesting equipment and you know this is an example where this is a chassis um it's got some years to this um, but at the time this is probably a quarter million half a million dollar piece of hardware that you know the data center got upgraded and they've consolidated this down to the couple to you appliances that's probably twice as much power but we get this in our warehouse and it's like all right how can we use this for somehow on the blockchain? Well, you know, because there's got to be some usage out, out of this. So we yeah, that's still pretty powerful technology in my in my mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and then this doesn't even have the storage, but the storage. I think there's two to four terabytes on each of these chassis, each of these blades. Yeah. So you've got eight blades on this chassis. His chassis can hold up to sixteen blades, but just think of those blades as nodes. Um, yeah. So there's we've got eight nodes that we kind of we can stand up and decide what project we want to be a part of. With Better Hash, I think it's BetterHash.net. What we did was we installed it on this chassis, and then um, I'm gonna jump ahead here. And if you can see this, this here, yeah. Well, Better Hash, they've got um, they've got what twenty less, a little bit less than twenty tokens that they will look at your hardware and decide what is the most efficient way to use that by mining. So you can see right. kind of they've kind of they've expanded this over the over the year to include more and more tokens. Some of these are, are straight GPU based. Um, right. we're with 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 our chassis it's all compute based. So based on all this, they told us, hey, your uh, your XMR, which is Monero, that's the most efficient way to mine. Monero, okay. um, it's XMR is, is the token. It's a it's the largest privacy blockchain. Um, okay. Which the pros and cons, really from a con standpoint, um, it's really hard to to get any visibility and where the stuff comes in and out of of Monero. Um, so I, I don't. It's not probably the best thing for governments to get their hands wrapped around. Whereas Bitcoin, at least you can see transactions that happen and where they're going. Monero is a little bit tougher uh, to see that that type of exposure. Sure. But we, but we, you know, that it's it, going back to the digital freedom of speech. It's we're allowing, as you can see here, we've got eight nodes that are are running compute hash hash rates um, uh, through Monero. So we're probably combined. Um, here's a good example. So, so we kind of looked at because we wanted to with this chassis taking a step back. Chassis, you got 16 slots. We're using eight of them on those G9 uh, blades, but we've got another eight on the bottom. So we kind of ran like if we put in G8s, how much more efficient or non-efficient is that going to be compared to G9? So this top one right here, this is um, we've got 12 cores on the system. I think this is this is per um, per node. 
I think it's times two is per, per node. So you're looking at around 9,000 hashes per second per node. And so we, at the time, kind of broke out the economics, how much monthly income is that, is that from Monero? How does that translate to oh, Bitcoin? Bitcoin, And so for each node, um, it's really, we're looking at about $11 a node. Um, so okay. times it by eight. So you're looking at about $100 per year. So it's not economics. If you looked at it from an electricity standpoint, it's, it's, it's going to be off, off whack. You're going to be spending more on electricity. Um, so we kind of ran ran this. We compared it with the G8. And you can see the G8 only runs about 2,600. So it's about 5,200 hashes per second on a G8. So it's a little bit more inefficient, and it's going to eat up more more power probably. So we didn't. We decided not to put the G8s in. Just stayed with the G9s. Right. Um, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, so, so you look at the economics. So that was one thing we decided to do on. Um, on our hardware now, if you if you really want to start getting getting close to break even, is how can you stack different applications on each node? And what I mean by is, if you've got these eight nodes and they're running these hashes and you're doing compute, well, what about the two to four terabytes on each of the nodes? So there's a lot of file applications out there that you can be a part of. Um, file Decentral coin, de de decentralized yeah, files. Exactly. So if I'm, oh, okay. if I'm a user and I put up a a gig, just think of that storage is going to be on my nodes and then also on maybe two or 300 nodes all over the world. So okay. if, my, if, I, if I go offline, they'll still have access to nodes all over the world. So you've got, you know, some of the big file applications. Filecoin is probably the largest. That's F-I-L. Um, okay. The issue with Filecoin is, you know, for us is there's a buy-in. So you have to buy, and most of we're talking about file storage and file applications. There's a buy-in, so you have to provide the tokens up front. Filecoin at the time was close to $100 a token. I mean, it was a $50,000, $60,000 investment for us to get, get on Filecoin. Um, okay. And then if we if our power goes out, we've got UPSs, but we're not a data center. We're not, you know, so if they, get, they penalize us. So if we go offline for an extended period, they take our tokens, our, our collateral away. So there's a lot of risk there if you don't sure. have a fully data center set up. But on the flip side, if you do have the data center and you can make that initial investment, um, you can get rewarded handsomely. Um, but we decided, you know, Josh, I can, I don't know if you want me, I had done the video. Monero you can do, you can play whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Monero is kind of, um, maybe I'll just play this video. Yeah. Um, just taking a step back to the, the Monero, why Monero? Can you hear sound on this? Uh, no. Well, you could send me that video or that slide and then I can, oh, now I can hear it. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start it over. Yeah. So th this is a high level of Monero. Um, even for people that may not know what blockchain is, this is to me was a good. Yeah. Like Monero uses a blockchain to securely record transactions. A blockchain is a digital ledger of transactions to which entries can only be added. In a blockchain, transactions are grouped into blocks which are linked together to compose a chain. A copy of the blockchain is simultaneously maintained by the majority of Monero network members. The blockchain secures transactions without the need for a central authority. But how does it achieve this? A block is a collection of payments submitted around the same time. Members of the Monero network called miners record payments into blocks. For a new block to be accepted by the network, it must follow a set of rules and come with a solution to a challenge determined by the previous block. That's where miners come in, by using their processing power to solve blocks. By design, it takes roughly two minutes to solve a block, regardless of how many miners are attempting. When a new block is added, the network rewards the winning miner with a scheduled amount of Monero. Any attempt to change a past block requires recomputing all subsequent blocks, which wastes the energy of anyone attempting it. This is how blockchain technology and the mining process ensure security of the network and control the mission of the currency. All right, so this is That's a awesome. good idea. Uh, Monero, Monero. I don't know what the URL, but if you if you Google Monero and crypto, it's a, there's a whole website and to get more information. Yeah. 
but yeah, so, so, go, so going I'll back, put a link, is, I'll put a link in our description too. Okay. Yeah. So going back to that, the economics, so we've got, we're, we're, now we're doing compute, we're utilizing our CPU that we have there. Again, this is just an example. Um, we've got eight, I think that one of the previous slides was we have eight nodes, we call them my workers, eight workers, but you can kind of through better hash dashboard, you can kind of see all the transactions that happen. Um, again, we're, we're talking about pennies. I mean, these are multiple pennies throughout the day. Um, right. So it's not, if we've got 50 nodes, it, it might be a little bit different story, but um, so you get, we pull a lot of these reports from better hash, get an idea um, what your workers are doing. Um, and then you can, then you can flip this and then be able to convert it to Bitcoin and then put it on your wallet. Um, so yeah, so at this time, and this was last year, we we're, we we're making about eight to nine dollars a month um, per node. So again, we're, we're we're hovering around a little under that hundred dollars. Um, so yeah, so now we're doing we've got hundred dollars in tokens we're getting a month um, for Monero. What else can we 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 leverage our hardware with? And one of the things was fi was storage because we've got storage not being utilized by Monero. Um, right. So we decided there was a couple options. I talked about Filecoin. Uh, there's one option called Saya, which the, the ticker for that is SC. Okay. Um, they don't have as many rules. So that way, if you do go offline, you're not going to be completely penalized for it. You still have to have some type of um, leverage and uh, tokens in each of the nodes, even to get into the to, into this blockchain. Um, so again, I just kind of pulled some stuff from the website uh, but it gives you a good idea kind of how what the ex expansiveness of the SIA uh, blockchain um, oh I wow you know you can see how many node providers there are um, all over the world how many downloads use stores and we're talking um, a decent amount um, this is one of our nodes so you know this node had over 1600 tokens on there balance of 15 dollars. so when we started with this Sia coin, it was about three cents a token. So you had to I think we had to get its X amount on each node. The price right now, just to give you a comparison, is uh, is 0 0.002 cents. Um, so the value from three cents down to a, I don't even know what that, what, what, is, what that we consider two tenths of a cent. <laughs> two tenths of a of a cent is there's not much value there, but it gives you a good dashboard for each of the nodes, so you can see you know what what's being used now you can see here um, with this node we we um we set the contracts at, from one to six months so anything further than six months we just didn't. and then you can set the price as an operator when we first started this we kind of kept the prices low because we wanted we wanted people to to use our node so this this node you can see there was 383 successful contracts earned us three dollars um so did we, but we also lost some revenue, which means I think it was it was probably and we have eleven failed contracts, so it could have been related to we lost power or connection. We've got a Comcast connection, so there could have been some factors. So you can see that it cost us eight cents, made three dollars. Okay. Um, but going back to the Monero side, if we we once we added this block, these file applications, it's not that the energy costs aren't increasing. We're still using the same same capacity, so. When we talk oh, about okay. three hundred dollars yeah. a month for electricity, we're only making a hundred for Monero. Well, now with Saya, we start to get creep closer to that break even. Now we're making maybe a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars a month using Saya. We're, we're, we've got, you know, I think at one time, here's an example. These are all contracts. Um, you can see the start date and then the expiration date. So these, once these are fulfilled, then you get rewarded. Fulfilling the fulfilling the contract, so we I think in each of the nodes we had out of our eight nodes, I think six of the nodes were using Sia application. I think any node was probably having three hundred existing contracts in place. But you, oh, wow. again, you can you can see the revenue collateral. Now we set again set the prices low, so over time once we get more credibility. Um, and so that we've got some successful contracts fulfilled, then we can start increasing that cost. Um, we ended up, you know, well, one thing was interesting was, is, well, who's using this? Um, so we ran some bandwidth utilizations and we quickly, we quickly saw after hours utilization kind of spiked a little bit. So it was telling me that most of the users of this were overseas, but if you compare 
you know, if somebody over in the country um, that wants to use storage on Saya, you're talking about pennies compared to if they want to do the same, similar stuff than Amazon or Microsoft. So, yeah. the, so again, I'm going back to this digital freedom of speech because we're, we're providing the stores infrastructure at very cost of cost effective rates and people overseas can, can utilize this. Now, I don't know what people are using it for. You know, you can, you can have a whole other discussion about the bad players and the ones that are used, the good players that are using this and the bad players using this. Yeah, um, but you, you legit have bad players in S Amazon S3 and yeah. uh, Azure storage buckets. I mean, like it, especially if it's encrypted traffic, no one know, knows what's in the encryption buckets that are yeah. out there. So like, I mean, hopefully the majority is good. And if someone were to contact you and say, Hey, this contract is bad stuff, you could remove it. <laughs> yeah. It's really it. now. Um, this is data utilization. So we had moved it. We moved into a new facility last year. So we were trying, I knew we had to disconnect everything. So we kind of let all the contracts expire. We fulfill, try to fulfill all the contracts. You can see that. Um, I think we, we started killing it off. Um, slowly they started not publish publishing our nodes so we just let contracts expire and we fulfill them so you can kind of see the rates you can see we started that process last year in the or uh, uh, the previous year and then how that stuff kind of goes down data usage um yeah so yeah so so again and then the other the other one we did we did eight six with uh Sia coin and then we did Two other nodes with a, another file application called Storage. It's S T O R J. Okay. Um, it was a little, a little bit clunkier. Didn't have an, as nice um, of a dashboard as Sia did. Um, but again, you know, you put in your collateral of, of tokens, and then you get rewarded. You prop up so much storage. Similar concept. We just kind of wanted to diversify it a little bit. Um, the price of that was. I think at the time it was like around a dollar. So, so the value was definitely better than Saya, but it was also, um, to me, a little bit clunkier. The, the last thing we had we had done is too. So now, now that you've got some compute file, you get close to that break even. We we wanted to become a validator. So on two of the nodes, node seven and eight, we became a Bitcoin validator, which, um, which really means that we can validate any transactions on Bitcoin, and then we take a a gas fee or take a little uh, portion of that. I didn't, you know, the, a lot of the value of, of big of blockchain technology are the smart contracts. It's it's eliminating the middlemen. Um, right. In some ways, this is this kind of doesn't make a lot of sense because we are the middlemen. So there's gas fees. So I didn't, you know, we download the the validator. I think we ran it for maybe a, a month or two, but I, I ended up just turning it off. It wasn't. We weren't making much from from a value standpoint. And I just, I didn't want to be a middleman um, sure. on some of this stuff either. So, but, but again, file, compute, validator. Now you can kind of understand how you can get, become break even. Start to become break even. Money. Yeah. And then if you had more value on some of the stuff, maybe you start actually making money, but you know, some of the, some of the value, the value really tanked in the last six to nine months. So right. it just, you know, well, so we ended a lot up stopping. Of, I think a lot of people really just view blockchain and crypto as you know you know bitcoin the biggest one and people heard of ethereum too but like just the view of it like gold bars is, is the price going up or down a lot of people don't realize that there's all this like decentralized storage decentralized compute for just people that can't afford a data center or can't afford to yeah. rent a server at a data center like i think you showed a slide where it was like a couple terabyte or a terabyte of space was twenty three dollars a month on Amazon S three, and it's two to three dollars on one of these decentralized. So like, yeah. like the to get into hosting an application or storage or or is a lot che cheaper through this decentralized uh, technology. There was a show called uh, Silicon Valley. Uh, I think it was on HBO. It's uh, it's about these guys, and they end up trying to make a decentralized internet a decentralized storage node uh, and that's and it was all kind of built on it looked like it was built on blockchain it, it, it you know from they didn't get too deep into the tech but like i always thought that that was a great idea that like hey there's tons of 
empty storage and empty compute out there on the internet that's not being utilized at all and it's on yep. is there a way to utilize it and this is the exact way to utilize it <laughs> yeah it's um you know what i what i would love to get is like real world examples like if somebody overseas is actually using saya um what what are they using it for um you know same thing with monero you know what who's using like good the good good characters who's using the stuff why you know those real world examples i don't i didn't have those examples um sure. but one but one thing with with the industry so we've got um you know there's there's this uh it's called obata um, yeah i was interested in that now. i looked that yeah, up we, when you sent that to me yeah we we joined that um a few months ago we haven't we haven't really hit the ground running um i think they've now set all that operators so i think there's a hundred nodes now or a hundred operators that are um confirmed I, we just we haven't gotten there yet from a um uh production standpoint um and i and i won't you know just for, for the folks that don't really know what a dao is um i think i had mentioned this earlier this just this kind of sums it up a little bit of of what dao is and what obata um as we're part of um again a couple of things with dao no upgrades needed the software um it's a okay yeah it's, it's a collaborative effort it's not a one individual does an upgrade it has to be approved um and everyone has to be on board with those type of changes okay that's very cool um so it, again it's it's not it's not tech it's it's an agreement i think like going back to those smart contracts this is this is one example of this um this kind of gives you the the, the history of obata i will Okay. Time of this. But you can see it was start initial group was started in 2017 and they've been working their way to where we're at now, which now we're at 2023. We've got a hundred down 101 down members and with hopefully production launched sometime later this year. Um so you've got you know, in some ways Obata adds a layer of transparency um and traceability. So they want to know exactly where the stuff how it was manufactured, where it was sold. Where was it recycled? Who was it sold to after a reuse market? So, you know, with blockchain, you all that stuff is time stamped in there and there's no way you can change it. So there's full Oh, okay. I I was gonna ask this stuff goes. exactly how is this used, but now I get it. So it's it's like a it's like a registry and a ledger of recycling or like I think I think you had Carfax in there, the Carfax registry. <laughs> Yeah, it's they call it, and I don't have that slide in here, but they call it a physical NFT. So I think everybody's familiar with an NFT, the digital NFTs, and um, you know this is kind of a physical NFT, a device with a serial number, specs, you know, hard drives capacity, everything about that device now has a P NFT created for it. So when we we get in our system and we go through our process and we we wipe it, we test it, we refurbish it. Then, it, then we add that to as a PNFT. It's on the blockchain, and then next place it goes, it has visibility of when we got ownership of it, what we did to it. I think that the plan eventually, hopefully, would be you know the OEMs of the world, the Dells, the HPs, the Apples, that they once they start production of of these devices, they're able to put that on the blockchain, so they know where where the parts were sourced from they know when it was manufactured they know when it was tested they know when it was hit retail they know when, when someone bought it like so so that way you know if i get an eight-year-old laptop i know exactly where where it was sourced from all the times all that stuff but for obata this is really you know this has happened when when our you know we're considering an itad um, we're part of the sure. ITED industry, but when we get these devices, we then add them to a, add a PNFT and put them on the blockchain. That's awesome. So basically, it's it's unrefutable evidence of tracking of a of a server or a laptop or whatever. Like, yep. you know exactly where it's been, what it's had, what it was originally equipped with. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's it, awesome. There's a there's a guarantee. Like when you know we did our thing to it, it's on the blockchain. And we know exactly what was wrong with it, if anything was wrong with it, and we know there's it's full transparency at its finest because there's you can't you can't change it. And you know I think for for 
for blockchain, it's 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 that that transparency is is the most important part part of this. Um, yeah, I just that's I don't great. know enough like how you know there's there's going to be APIs needed in order to you can you can put this stuff on the blockchain all day, but how do you visualize it? How do you see it? How does somebody look in there and make sure it's legit information there? So there's there's definitely some APIs and other applications that you would attach to this blockchain. Um, to make it more readable for for just normal folks, because from a technical standpoint, we could probably pull this information. But you, a lot of times, but, we deal with non technical people. And we, yeah, it, basically, there need, needs to be a web, you know, HTML front end somewhere, yeah. pull in on the API, so you can type in your serial number and go, okay, it went here, 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 here and this is what happened. Yep, that's yeah, very so, cool. I yeah, would love it know, if I'm, if the Dells and HPs got in involved on this that'd be great yeah maybe someday they will um i think there's good ex examples of agriculture where i think you're seeing some examples of blockchain where you know exactly where you know where the corn seed is going in on an acre in the middle of iowa and where it then gets harvested and where it ends up like there's examples and now that you've seen stuff like that get put on blockchains and if there is a recall um for for that corn, maybe the recall just affects a couple acres and not, you know, a whole a whole right. line of acres and and stuff. So I think there's definitely benefits there. But you're going to see more of these these type of examples popping up. Um, uh, you know, I think most people That's when they see crypto, they see they see the prices going tanking. They see the FTX is going out of out of business. They see some corruption, some hacking. So people are kind of turned off from crypto. But that's not. You know, the underlying technology is what really drives the value here. Um, I think people tend to forget about that. You know, it's the exchanges you know, yeah. that get it's the exchanges that get hacked, not the blockchain. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. It's um, it's it's a uh, it's an interesting time, but it's um, you know, it's a, I don't want people to get discouraged. You know, not yeah. you know, invest invest if you can. I always tell people. Especially Bitcoin, you know why? Why not put some money in Bitcoin and then just hang on to it? Look at it as a long-term investment, and then you don't, you know, the risk is low. If, if it tanks and everything poofs disappears, you know, I, I think the risk is low. But there's a real probability that this continues to evolve and the value is going to continue to go up. And you don't, for, for a lot of people, you don't want to miss that boat. Well, yeah, and I think, like you said, a lot of people, you see a lot of the. Uh... We'll just say the the Reddit guys making a, a lot of money fast. And so I think the craze got into how do I make a bunch of money quick? And, oh, you can make a bunch of money quick in Bitcoin rather than thinking of it in a long-term buy and hold type of situation. So it's like well, normal investing. And and the technology is solid. And I, there's a lot more to the technology, like such as the, the Obata and – um, decentralized storage. I mean, there's just so many applications to it because there's a ton of compute and storage out there that's just not being utilized. Um, so I think it's a great technology. I, like you said, I don't want people to get down on the technology. You can get down on how some people run the exchanges and and you know done bad things. You know, they did the opposite of the intent of blockchain and crypto. Um, they did the same things big banks do when they you know over leveraged themselves <laughs> these exchanges yeah. i mean that's why the that's why ftx fail it wasn't it wasn't because bitcoin or blockchain or ethereum is bad technology or got hacked behind the scenes it's because of just poor management <laughs> oh yeah incompetence i mean yeah. yes yeah. I, I agree it's it, and and for me it's like you know if i'm going to make an investment in, in a, like let's use sandbox or decentral land um those are I, I, I could be wrong but i think those are related to metaverse and that virtual reality stuff. It, so it's like those are um, are play, they play right into that. So there's real value there. You can you can put your hands around something tangible with the way um, those projects are, are ran. So to me, it's a lower risk to put sure. invest in stuff like that. Now you may it may be invested at three dollars and it goes down to fifty cents. There's that possibility, but I don't I don't see those things poofing and going away. Um, and no. I only see metaverse stuff. It's going to, you know, I don't know how, how quickly people are going to adapt to it, but I don't see that going away either. I, I can only see more and more people um, jumping on board on, on stuff like that. Yeah. 
Uh, this is really cool stuff, and that, I, honestly, I think it helps lay groundwork for people to better understand what the possibilities are with blockchain and, and the the you know crypto. Everyone just says quote crypto, and uh, everyone, like you said, automatically thinks of the guy at FTX and. <laughs> Yep. Oh my gosh, he stole all my money. Well, there's a lot more to it and a lot more available, which is awesome. Yeah, it's you're gonna see more more um you're gonna see some domino effects. I mean, in BlockFi, I think the result of FTX, they filed bankruptcy. Um Genesis just filed bankruptcy oh, okay. close to it yesterday. Um so it's you know, just trying as myself, I, I don't want to expose myself too much because I do use some some exchanges that aren't um, decentralized um, because maybe the ledger doesn't support that specific token or I, I, I'm looking at more of a short-term investment where I don't think I'm going to hang on to it long-term. So there's a little bit of, of risk for us, but I don't, I'm not exposing, if I've got a portfolio of crypto, it's less than 20, less than 15%. It's on those type of exchanges. The rest is all off on a hardware wallet safely in my, in my safe. That's awesome. That's a, that's a good tip for everyone too. Well, thank you very much. I really, really, really appreciate it. This was really awesome. And uh, I, I hope a lot of people get something out of this. I'm sure they will. Uh, um, the tech people will definitely be like, ooh, decentralized storage. <laughs> that's a great idea. I, it, it's got it, me thinking. It, it, it makes sense. But you know, on the flip side, there's always there's always policies. There's there's the cybersecurity side. How do you how do you wrap your hands around you got critical data you don't really have control over it on this decent so there's there's de there's definitely going to be hesitations sure. and pushbacks um to stuff like that people just i don't think fully understand too and then you, you know these projects too you don't you don't always have a, your hands wrapped around who who are the members of those um those projects right. who's leading those projects you hope it's not bad actors you hope it's not governments um so there's still a lot of unknown um, and, you know, I, we work with a lot of, of, of school districts and municipalities and counties. I don't think, unless their policies are going to allow, I don't think they'll ever jump to something like this. If they're talking about student data or community right. data um, until there's more, you know, more regulation, more policies around it. Now, you're going to see that stuff coming, too. You know, I, I think one of the packages that Biden had signed maybe last year before there was – um, so some wording about crypto and more regulation around that. So I think you're going to see more, you're going to see the government get, the government get more hands on, on, on this crypto because right now the market's a trillion dollar market. Um, so right. And I don't, again, I don't see it going away, disappearing. So you're going to see more governments try to get their hands right, which well, the, I, I, yeah. I'm for, I think the, the yeah. fact is that governments are trying to get involved, ever, they're starting to see, hey, there's uses to this besides just I think you'll see uh, some sort of universal – they'll, they'll try to make some sort of universal currency for different countries, and then they'll try to do global. But, but uh, I'm, we're, we're a long way away from that. <laughs> yeah. We're, as our – in the U.S., I would imagine at some point we're going to have a digital currency. You know, I don't, I don't know when. I don't – you know, I think China started that years ago, so I don't even know if they even have – hard currency anymore and coins and cash and stuff like that. I don't actually know. Yeah. But I, it's, it's, they're going to have to, we're going to, as a society here, we're, there's got to, the government's going to want to be able to, to regulate that digital currency. So I, I see that coming down the road at some point. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you everyone for watching. Yes. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. Yep. Take care.